All right, I'm sitting here with Sir Tim Berners-Lee, inventor of the World Wide Web. Hello, Sir Tim. Thank you. Pleased to meet you as well. I want to talk about your vision of the web as a place for everyone and ask, do you think or, or worry uh, or have ideas about the everyone in that? Is everyone equally able to benefit from the web today? Are there those who are benefiting or using it less? Those who are maybe over-benefiting or overusing it in that category of everyone? How do you think about that distribution? Uh, well, I'm not sure if over-benefiting is a thing in, 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 <laughs> in a way, but under-benefiting, definitely. I mean, yeah. with 2016, uh, the web uh, is, is more than 25 years old, but only, it's a large number, but still it's only 41% roughly of the people in the world actually use the web to start with. Mm. So there's two-thirds of the world roughly don't use it anyway, and then of the people who do, there are people who live in countries where you can't actually get to the entire web because the government blocks things. Right, right. Uh, there are people who, uh, of course, also there are people, because it's a very text-oriented medium at the moment, there are people who could get access to it because they can't read, then it doesn't actually work mm. for them. What are you, I'll just be as direct as possible with this one. We celebrate entrepreneurship a lot in mm -hmm. our culture these days, especially in connection to the internet. Everybody wants to get rich make money, IPO, raise investment dollars. Why did you not seek to get rich on one of the greatest inventions, probably in the history of our species? Because it wouldn't have worked. Because if it had been a poor pay thing, I saw lots of people who had sort of projects like that take off, which were commercial. Uh, they would have become walled gardens. They would have been limited. Mm -hmm. The really important thing about the web is that not only everybody can use it, but also anybody can publish. And the, w and the really important thing when you make that link that some you put a blog a link in your blog, you can link to anything. You must be able to put anything out on the web, and that's a big ask. Yeah. So I'm asking everybody to collaborate, be part of the same system. You can't also ask for sort of ten cents a click. Thank you. Hope here. What gives you the most hope for the future of the web? I think um, from the beginning, one of the really cool things about it was that the, uh, after my initial development of it, people picked it up in all kinds of places, all mm. kinds of different people picked it up, and there's been this spirit of collaboration internationally, yeah. so, uh, which has been just really exciting. People would suddenly crop up, come out of the woodwork, and say, you know, hey, I, you, know, you have that problem, I have a solution. And so it's been people working together uh, who have achieved amazing things, and uh, um, so now we have people building uh, big new software systems, collaborating over the internet. The spirit of that collaboration, yeah. I think, is what gives me huge hope for the future. Does the, l the scale of collaboration surprise you in any way versus what was possible before or even what was in your initial vision at CERN? Well, it's neat. I mean, yeah. my, uh, one of the things I really wanted to be able to do with the initial web was to uh, for the other software projects, mm -hmm. I wanted to be able to um, get people to share their designs and uh, basically collaborate, yeah. even though they're at different places, uh, on building software projects. And I did that with a few, you know, half a dozen people <laughs> working on the early web, for, yeah. for example. Now, there's a huge number of place, you know, people at places like uh, GitHub, for example, mm -hmm. or these communities where, where thousands of people come together and all collaborate on different things. So that environment now is really exciting and yeah. it's a massive growth from the, uh, from massive difference from the, from the first, the old ways. On the flip side of that, is there anything that you fear about the future of the web? It's always, the answer to that has always been uh, that somebody or something, some government or some company should get to control it. Mm. It's got to be free. It's got to be free and open, it's got to be owned by everybody. Uh, if one government gets to control it, then uh, they will be able to use it for political reasons, they will be able to block, they'll block who you get access to. If one company controls it, they will determine uh, all the innovation. Yeah. So we, we, we lose a huge amount. So you want to make sure it stays open? It stays open. Yeah, and that's the for everyone part, I get that. Okay, you don't want to rotate screen. Mm. Okay. 
I want to uh, focus on this idea of openness and a potential cost of openness. The early web, it seems like the group of people who developed it were peers, you all knew each other, there was a level of mutual respect. Now with so many more close to everyone being online, we see viral content not necessarily being true content. Mm -hmm. We see abuse, we see yeah. harassment. And do you have any uh, regrets or any concerns at least about the cost of openness in terms of the tone, the tenor, the safety and security of, of our communication? That's a really good question. I think initially, first uh, we all said, no, censorship is bad, anybody can say anything. Yeah. And there was this utopian idea, or you know, the, the, the original uh, sort of crypto utopians thought we will all be able to live with our own rules, without, you know, we don't need you, the government, we don't need you, the, the corporations. We will just, uh, we will all be happy and friendly and collaborative. Mm -hmm. And in fact, of course, yeah, there's a lot of, uh, of, of nasty stuff, but there's a lot of things which aren't true. Uh, it, it can be dangerous to go uh, looking, looking up medi your medical condition because you might get trapped by some charlatan site which will send you some uh, actually dangerous drug, right. drug and so on. So it's not serious. And, uh, and I think some people look at the, uh, social, the uh, social networks on the web uh, now, and wonder to what extent uh, uh, you know, are they helping or, or hindering? It's a good, uh, I think it's a good question to ask if you're building a social network, if yeah. you're making a new one. Think, okay, so what's going to be the effect when you connect people together? You know, you've got the, you've got concepts of friends, and you've got concepts of likes, and you've got concepts of sharing things. Then, how could you build your social network so that people naturally tend to hear respected voices so that the system figures out who is respected, mm. so that the dross, so that the people who just respond out of anger get built to the bottom. I think that's a really interesting question now, and yeah. I think, uh, some, I think uh, some of the e existing social networks are trying to look at how they could perhaps re-engineer to make it more of a constructive space, yeah. just to make it like a, you know, just a uh, I like a sort of the difference between a nice school room and, and, a, a, and a, a, a rowdy school room and a constructive school room, one where people are, where the kids are all walking, working together. It's the way the way the school room is built, it's the way the teacher runs yeah, it. It's a design so decision in some ways. Yeah, yeah some yeah. of it can be done by design, design decisions, yes. So sometimes I think about this, that, that the web is, as you said, has 41% of the world using it. That's billions of people. Um, do you ever think that given how essential the web is to the daily life of billions, that there are more people that should be involved in its development, uh, in its future, in sort of its definition? And if so, who are they and how do they take part in that? Well, the development of the, you know, the web spread across the internet. Yeah. And the internet has already been developed mainly by the US. It has been developed with, a, with US military funding, with the DARPA funding. And so most of the, the, the computers connected to the internet were in the US. So the web spread across it, so I basically had to come to the US because that's where the web was happening. Um, because of that history. Yeah. Uh, and then, and so to a certain extent, a lot of the people who've been involved in the early engineering are uh, white males like me, spe English speaking. Well, there are, no, there are no white males <laughs> like you, Tim. There <laughs> are, <laughs> you have, you, have you checked? <laughs> you really shaking the trees. It's surprising who is out there. Yeah, uh, yeah. Yes, no two are like, but they're all, but in a way, uh, yeah. For, so for example, the tags in HTML, when you learn HTML language, yes. there are things like, uh, <coughs> uh, the, you know, the, the H1 for heading, H is, that's, that's, yes. that's kind of English. And the color, mm. a lot of the languages are based in English. So in fact, uh, yeah, we need. To, uh, it's always good when we can get people involved. Uh, really, really, really important to get women coding yeah. and to get women involved in design. We have a lot of women in the, in the WCC team. Uh, we have some, uh, quite a lot in, uh, in, the, in, in the World Weather Consortium community. Um, but uh, out there in general, there are countries where still it's not considered uh, a sort of feminine thing mm. to study math and. So computer science and things. So we, uh, having more women involved is uh, always important. Getting people in different nationalities involved, uh, <coughs> people of different cultures is important because the web has to serve everybody. Yeah. So it's got to have an insight as to what's needed, insight of what sort of websites people can be building when they come from a completely different culture. And the way to do that is to have people from that completely different culture yeah. help build the web. Great. 
Were you surprised at all by the rise uh, of the animated GIF as a web <laughs> item? I think the, uh, uh, yes, I suppose the, 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 the animated <laughs> GIF was surprising, but the, and the uh, mm -hmm. spacer GIFs, uh, I think, more, more is, a, is another thing, mm -hmm. which uh, uh, wouldn't have protected the fact that when you load your page, there are these little images which are just one pixel by yeah. one pixel, yeah. and they're not there for you to see. They're there because that helps somebody monitor the fact that you've loaded the page. Um, so that, you know, all kinds of funny things which we didn't necessarily uh, uh, pick up. Do you, um, do you say GIF or GIF? I say ping. <laughs> Portable <laughs> natural graphics. Don't <laughs> use the alternatives because uh, when was when there was a, the point when somebody suggested that there may be pens needed for the one big image, mm -hmm. then uh, we started a new standard effort, which was completely free of open. So if you use, so you should be shipping portable network graphic files, not pings, no, so not GIFs <laughs> or GIFs. You should be shipping pings. All right. uh, because they, you know, we produced that to be scrupulously clean of, yeah. of any royalties that you, that you might have to pay. You hear that, internet people? Mm -hmm. Pings, that's the new GIF. Yes, right. yeah, pings are the new GIF. Uh, so, uh, my last question for you, does it ever bother you when people don't, aren't able to distinguish between the web and the internet? Uh, like, do, uh, do you think it, the it distinction matters? It who they are. Okay. If, they, if they're teaching computer science and if they're doing, uh, and if they're building s software, then, then yes, it does. But for a lot of people out there, there isn't uh, a lot of difference. I was giving a talk in Poland mm -hmm. uh, once, and, they, and the translators kept making a mistake and yeah. I said look when you translate I want you to be clear about the Polish word for gif for, sorry Polish <laughs> for, for, <laughs> yes for, for got him the Polish word for word for web yeah. and for net and uh, they said well we we only have one word it's a net here or something yeah I said why so but you know but remember the 20 years when the, you know there was uh, uh, internet or internet protocols existed but the web the, you know, between 1989 between 1969 and 1989 there was an internet, but there was no web. Right. And they said, well, hang on, you're in Poland. Which between 1969 and 1989, there was nothing. Yeah. 1989, solidarity and uh, uh, the, the body more went down, and we got everything all at once. So we just have one word for it. So I thought, yeah. okay. Okay. <laughs> Fair enough. I give up. Yeah. Uh, uh, for you, it's all the same. Right. Well, thank you so much for your time. Uh, congratulations on the anniversary. Thank and you. Thank, thank you for your contributions. Yeah. Bye, y'all. Yeah.